start to pay attention and you're re-exploring now and you're yeah. reimagining the community that you've always lived in. Richard Forte presents. Hey everybody, welcome to Richard Forte Presents. Today is a special day in Sweet Sixteen Studio. I have Jamie Latham with me here. Jamie, thanks for coming. My pleasure, thanks for inviting me. For those who don't know, Jamie is the Executive Director of Creative Industries in North Bay, which also represents the Nipissing yes. zeitgeist, the yes, region. the region, the um, area. But specifically, uh, your office is downtown North Bay. Yeah. And why don't you tell us what the mandate of Creative Industries is yeah. right off the top, just so everybody knows. So Creative Industries is a support organization. So we're a regional support organization. So we are here to support, advocate, and promote the creative sector within North Bay Nipissing. Awesome. And you guys um, have quite a diverse board. I was looking at your yeah. website and I was looking at the people that are on there. And it really is kind of neat to see the different people you have guiding that organization. How's it going? I mean, this pandemic obviously has been crazy for everybody. And we were just talking before the cameras were rolling about the challenges um, of the pandemic, trying to run an organization in this sort of warp time yeah. we're in right now. Can you give the audience a little update on how you've been surviving this? Yeah, I think I've been surviving the same way as everyone's surviving. It's kind of one step forward. Day by day. Day by day, week yeah. by week. Um, some days are easier than others and some are really tough. And mm. I think that I am not an anomaly in this. We are mm. all kind of going through that in different ways and in our own ways. Uh, and it's been tough. But at the same time, we've seen a lot of resiliency. Uh, an adaptation and some innovation really come out of COVID. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of the gaps um, that we see more readily because of COVID were already there within the creative sector. They've just been exasperated, mm -hmm. uh, which maybe is not a bad thing because now we need to address them. We need to address the precarity of our arts and culture workers. Uh, we need to address that not-for-profit uh, funding is not ideal, that to fund projects over projects over projects with no capacity dollars, mm -hmm. with no dollars for the great people who are running those programs, it's problematic. Yeah. These are not new problems. They just seem bigger because of COVID. So it's a great time to kind of see those gaps and ideally address them. Yeah. So I'm hoping that that comes. Right. And I think we, we, we've all learned that sometimes we have to take a pause, that we yeah. can't just um, keep going indefinitely forever uh, because these outside forces come in and rock our world. And so I know that you're not just an executive director of a great organization, <laughs> that you're also personally an artist. And I was looking at your jamielatham.com yes. website before we talked, because I want to remind myself on your personal practice, not just the organization, because this show is really trying to bring out individual artists mm -hmm. as well, um, not just political heads. Yeah. And I'm and, tired of those political Yeah, things. yeah. It's, well, I mean, it just gets exhausting. Right? <laughs> it does. And, 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 you, and I'd like you to share um, how, you know, this challenge for you, because I think pe a lot of people can relate to it. And mm -hmm. again, we were talking about this. I wish the cameras were rolling just before they were because you articulated so wonderfully how the challenge has been for you personally yeah. as an artist, of course, as the leader of the organization. But what that's taught you about yourself and with um, your maturity, how you're handling that? Yeah, so I'm a drawer by trade. I went to a bajillion universities. Uh, no, I went to like four, but that's still a lot. So I went to Guelph, I went to Guelph, OCAD, ACAD, and then I ended up having a son. So once I had a baby as a single mom, I was like, well, I need a support system. So I ended up moving back to North Bay where I grew up, where my family is, and waiting until Nipissing developed their BFA program yeah. and was part of the first graduating class from Nipissing with my Bachelor of Fine Arts. So 
I kind of did my due diligence in traveling yeah. <laughs> across Canada and Gain going to perspective. All, yeah, getting all the art school perspective. Um, so I'm a drawer by trade. Um, I work in like figurative, mostly uh, with some layers of abstraction. And I was doing pretty well in yeah. my art practice before COVID. Um, yeah. I had been in an exhibition, in, a, in several exhibitions. I've been exhibiting across Ontario uh, and got curated into a 40 under 40 in Toronto. Congratulations. Last year. <laughs> Thank that was you. That's awesome. I was reading about that. Yeah, and with a whole bunch of Canadian artists that I Amazing look lineup. up to and was like, oh my God, yeah. I get to like be beside these people yeah. and like kind of uh, fangirled out over a lot of uh, different artists. Yeah. Um, but then COVID kind of hit and I just lost all of my creative motivation. Yeah. Not necessarily my love for no. the creative sector or you know my drive to advocate and support uh, those kind of ramped up but my ability to create kind of dwindled mm -hmm. and as a mom of two and working full-time arts admin uh, it was just I had to take a pause mm -hmm. I had to take a minute and it's still I still struggle with you know thinking I should have done all these things with this time I should have been prolific I should have been creating but at the end of the day I think if I needed to take a pause I needed to take a pause and that's okay and that's okay that's what you and were telling me okay and that's okay I, yeah. I understand you were so saying many people have tried to pivot and adapt during COVID to allow themselves to still continue their practice or their work and that's great but sometimes that just doesn't work and that's okay yeah. And it's okay to take a seat back and wait yeah. and really, you know, cultivate what you're thinking and take a minute and just survive. Right. <laughs> just that, survive this right. weird wave. And and I keep thinking of the caterpillar, right? That 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 gross little bug that goes into its cocoon and it needs that time. Yeah. It needs to be incubated and squeeze sometimes and for that and yeah. pressured and of course it probably doesn't like it at the moment but then it can burst out and have yeah. this beautiful artistic incredible magical wing set grow and become this butterfly that does yeah. what it does so are you saying i'm going to become a butterfly after this because that think, would be super great <laughs> I, well i think but isn't that what an art practice does isn't that why you choose to channel you know your energy your creativity into a process that brings then a result because I'm from what I've learned of watching artists around me boy it's a messy process oh it's messy it's ugly uh, you know you we can, see it on the white yeah. wall in the gallery and you look at the little you know the frame and it's powerful and amazing but to get there you know and even when you watch documentaries about artists that we all know to get there what they have to go through is just um, you know that's why it's not easy <laughs> well and you have to make you have to make garbage you have to make things that don't work to find out what does work right. um i had a, a a local professor here um who andrew vanchi yeah. shout out to andrew vanchi mm -hmm. who said you have to drive your work off the cliff like completely drive it off the cliff to know how many steps back you should have stopped and unless you do that, you'll never know how far you can push it. Mm. So again, it's one of those, like you learn more from your mistakes than you do from just stumbling into solutions blindly. Mm. And I think that that is so important to remember and so important to remember during this time, this COVID time of, you know, there's nothing, any way that you've managed as an artist, any way that you've managed as a mom, as a parent through this is not the wrong way. It's just the way you did it. Totally, totally. So now in town, because of your um, position, you get to see a lot of the moving parts behind the scenes that people don't necessarily see, right? Or just don't necessarily mm -hmm. understand. Can you talk to me about some good stories that you're seeing evolving? There's some um, some boxes popping up around town that are all decorated now by artists. There's more coming. There's you, why don't you tell us a few of the projects that are that are still trickling out mm -hmm. that the community is going to see 
um, coming up as we beautify and artify and explain to people why the artistic sector in our town is so vital and pivotal yeah. to its success. So one of the projects that uh, that we've seen come out is the traffic box design project. So that happened a year ago and it was a partnership led by the DIA, so downtown North Bay, uh, in partnership with the city because those traffic boxes are city assets, so they're city owned. And DIA had some money and they really thought, you know, why don't we make these kind of these mini murals? So that's where we had the call for submissions uh, the first time and local artists submitted work there was a selection process through the Public Art Advisory Committee and we see these amazing mini murals on these traffic boxes throughout our downtown core. Uh, and it was so successful that we advocated to the city that the Public Art Advisory Committee or the Public Art within City Hall needed some money. So we advocated and got $15,000 a year annually to be used for the advancement of public art within North Bay Nipsey. Hey, there's a win. Super exciting. <laughs> so we have approximately, I think, 53 traffic boxes throughout North Bay. We did 13 within the downtown. So this year we put another call out, this time led by the city itself, uh, for more submissions to traffic boxes. And we got over 50 submissions from local artists. It's so amazing. Um, really shows the depth of creative talent that we have in North Bay Nipissing. So that selection process is, is going on now and then we will have more of these amazing mini murals on electric boxes throughout North Bay. So it won't just be concentrated in the downtown, cool. we're going to spread them out. Uh, and then again we're going to have Something else that's coming out soon is the bike rack challenge, mm -hmm. which again is led through the city. Through public transportation is good. Pub we want more public, public transportation. transportation. We need Alternative bike racks. transportation, active transportation, all wins. Yeah. Uh, so they're doing a bike rack challenge that's going to launch soon. That's going to ask for public submissions on designing bike racks, which will then go into production over the winter and will be installed in the spring and summer coming up. So again, super exciting and all of these things matter <laughs> to the community. Public art matters uh, because it transforms these kind of forgotten spaces. Mm -hmm. How many times have you walked by a crosswalk mm -hmm. and never even noticed that these giant yeah. electrical but boxes? But now you do yeah. for a positive I reason. Was, I was <laughs> noticing yesterday, it's funny, I was at a stop at the uh, uh, what is it, Castle, that where, where sort of Main Street meets, you know, where, where all the, the streets sort of meet, Highway 17, Main yeah. Street, Algonquin, and, uh, you know, the, right there. And there's a couple boxes there, and I was just saying, I was just reflecting how easy it seems to do, but that that little bit of color really brings life. And, and it's amazing how a little thing like that changes how we feel it driving through town. It's and it changes your perspective and you start noticing things that you didn't notice before. And it's an act of transportation does the same thing. Mm. If you drive down a street, you're going to kind of pay attention to certain things. But if you ride your bike or if you walk or if you skateboard, now you're seeing the community in a different way. Yeah. And you're noticing that one tree or that... Yeah. And like, it means something. It and means the point something. of life is meaning. Exactly. <laughs> and you start to pay attention and you're re-exploring now and you're yeah. reimagining the community that you've always lived in. And you start to be, you have community buy-in. You feel reflected in your community. And if you feel reflected, then you're more likely to participate in events, take ownership, clean up the neighborhood, be that. proud of where you live and advocate when that neighborhood needs you. Okay, and that, no, that, that means to <laughs> and go, go continue, sorry. No, and that's, I think that's, that's one of the huge benefits of public art and a huge benefit in why communities matter. Yeah, totally. So now I want people to know where to go if they want to help you in your battle to keep making the community more beautiful, more mm -hmm. artistic, more connected. 
Um, can you tell people where to find you exactly or where to join your organization, how to support, how to be part of that change? Yeah. Because we do need more people, more energy, always. fresh eyes all the time, don't we? Yeah, we always need new perspectives at the table. We always need new voices. Otherwise, we become stagnant, and totally. that is not what we want. Arts and culture is not stagnant. <laughs> so how do people who don't want to be stagnant, who want to join your fight, join you? So you can check out our website at creativeindustriesnorth.ca, and anyone can email me at jamie at, it's long, jamie at creativeindustriesnorth.ca. Uh, and my office is at the Chamber of Commerce. And under COVID restrictions, it's a little bit harder to come and visit me, yeah. but I am more than happy to meet anyone, to jump on a Zoom call, to have a phone call. Cool. The more people I can talk to, the more voices I hear, the better I can do my job. Awesome. Well, thanks for taking time to come in today and talking with us and getting the word out through our little show. It's really, really appreciated. I know how much you do behind the scenes, and I know that it's not easy. It's not. Because, <laughs> you know, you, you're having to lead. And uh, that, by nature, is not easy. So again, thanks for everything you do and for what the work Creative Industries does. And go see them, go support them. It really is a worthy cause. And on that note, is there anything else that you could mention or wanted to say that you feel people should know about right now in our um, beautiful little town? There's so much coming up. It's just, it's hard. And I'm really hoping that as we open into like stage three, um, that the creative sector is going to be able to open back up. Yeah. I really feel like there's going to be a resurgence of amazing festivals, amazing events. And maybe done better. And, maybe maybe, and hopefully smarter. better. And because that institutional memory is sort of all shook up anyway. So it's now really what's right for now. Yeah. And who are we and how do we get involved? I think I think there is a lot of potential. And very intentional, I think, which will be super lovely. That's good. <laughs> awesome. Thanks for coming in, Jamie. Thank you. And uh, go find Jamie. Go support what she's doing. Find her personal website as well. <laughs> Not just the creative industries, but her personal website is really amazing because you'll see the depth of talent in her little fingertips and I guess throughout. <laughs> You'll love you go it. a little cross. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Richard. <laughs>